The Nintendo Switch has been alive for about three years now, which is the same age as my son Spray, who was born through an immaculate conception. But unlike my miracle child, the Switch is gonna have games by the end of 2019 from just about all the essential Nintendo franchises one could want. I'm talking about games like 2D and 3D Zelda, 2D and 3D Mario, Mario Maker, Fire Emblem, Luigi's Mansion, Super Smash Bros, Splatoon, Two and a Half Men, Cardboard Game, Yoshi, Kirby, Pokemon, even though I might get killed for mentioning that here. And if I kept going, we'd be here for like five to ten more seconds. Which I really don't think's necessary, because the bottom line is, by the end of 2019, the Switch is gonna have an ass load of fun for everybody. In fact, some would even say there's so much fun that Nintendo doesn't have a whole lot left to offer that'll keep the momentum going for the little hybrid that could. After all, we really don't have any idea what to expect in 2020 besides Animal Crossing, and that game was intended for this year. But the truth is that despite the Switch already having most of Nintendo's key franchises, there's still at least 22 more games Endog's got up their sleeves that are possible for 2020 and could easily carry the Switch to even greater heights. What games are they, you ask? Well, I, I already mentioned Animal Crossing, so, you know, there's number one. But if you want to know what the other 21 games are, then strap yourselves into your YouTube viewing chair, make a prank call to my Uncle Eddie who smokes cigarettes with a nicotine patch on, press the subscribe button if you haven't already, and allow me, the world's strongest man camera, to tell you what they are, because that's what I do. Number 2, Yokai Watch 4. This game's already coming out in Japan the day this video is being uploaded, which technically means it's a 2019 game since the Switch is region free. But playing this game without knowing the language can and will lead to serious real life consequences as seen in this actual footage sent to me by the irate gamer. <laughs> Mother of mercy, I don't speak Japanese! <laughs> Thankfully, though, you could bet your B-H-U-T-T-E hole that this game's certainly gonna be available in English by the end of 2020. And even though I enjoyed the battle system of the first three Yokai Watch games about as much as I enjoyed my wife declining sexual advances in the bedroom, I'm definitely gonna give the series another try with the fourth installment now that it's been completely revamped into a 3D action RPG. I mean, just look at this game and tell me it doesn't look incredible. Even if you're some kind of monster who doesn't have any interest in checking this out, though, I don't think I need to spend too much time on why this is almost certainly gonna come to Switches outside of Japan in 2020. Number 3, Paper Mario. That's right, some of this list is gonna be pure speculation that I have zero evidence to back up. But the point of this video is to assess everything Nintendo's got left in the chamber that has any possibility of coming out in 2020. Which means that some of the games I'm talking about are just more likely than others. That being said though, while there may not be any hard evidence to support the theory of a new Paper Mario game coming in 2020, there is enough circumstantial evidence that makes it a serious possibility. I mean, Color Splash was released in 2016, and we usually get a new Paper Mario game every three to five years or so. Although, the reception to that game was less than positive thanks to the battle system based around stickers. And even though I personally think that game was underrated and that people should have tried to enjoy it for what it was, I can't really argue the fact that the mechanics of the first two games are better suited for the series. And I think Intelligent Systems is aware of this too, meaning that they probably had to go back to the drawing board. But even if that means they need more than four years to make a new Paper Mario game, I wouldn't be surprised to at least hear an official announcement by the end of 2020. And if not Paper Mario, then possibly... Number 4. Mario and Luigi. Even more so than Paper Mario, we're a bit overdue for a new Mario and Luigi game. We technically just got a remake of Bowser's Inside Story. But given that the last new game was Paper Jam in 2015, which also happened to be a Paper Mario crossover, 2020 just might be the year for the Mario and Luigi series to make its debut on a home console. Number 5. Breath of the Wild 2. Yeah, it's another game that we already know is in development, but even though I think this game's unlikely for 2020 given that they just announced it, I don't necessarily think it's impossible. Because after all, the original Breath of the Wild was held back for a little over a year to give the Switch a strong launch title. And even though it took about five years to make that game completely from scratch, making a sequel shouldn't be nearly as difficult now that the foundation's laid out. And with the first game selling over 15 million copies, you can imagine that Nintendo would try to get the sequel out sooner than later. And speaking of sequels to the Switch's top games... Number 6. Super Mario Odyssey 2. Because if you're gonna make a sequel to Breath of the Wild, then why wouldn't you make a sequel to Mario Odyssey? The original Super Mario Odyssey's incredible, but in hindsight, I can't help but feel like there were a lot of missed opportunities for potential Cappy transformations. It's not worth complaining about or anything, but when you think about all the improvements Mario Galaxy 2 made over the first one, then you can't help but wonder how much potential another Mario Odyssey would have. And much like Breath of the Wild, the foundation's already laid out, plus it'd make Nintendo ass loads of money, and most importantly, it'd give us yet another game to keep us busy as if my wallet's not pissed at me enough. 
At the time of this recording, there's not even a rumor about this game, but according to my inside anonymous source at Nintendo, who only wishes to be identified as D. Bowser or Douglas B., there are serious plans for this game for as early as 2020. Normally, I wouldn't believe somebody who made me send uncomfortable pictures of myself in order to get this information, but given that Mario Odyssey never sold bonus stages as DLC, it would appear that Nintendo's taken my advice that DLC would be a stupid idea in comparison to just making a sequel. Whether or not my inside source is telling the truth, though, I could certainly see Mario Odyssey 2 being in development given how much more there was for the first game to do, and that there really isn't a whole lot else up Nintendo's sleeves that would sell better. Except for maybe... Number 7. A Noob 2D Mario Game with the Switch already having new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe in Mario Maker 2, you might think a new 2D Mario game would be the most pointless thing ever. And if it were just another new Super Mario Bros. game, then I'd completely agree. But if you ask me, I think 2D Mario still has a ton of potential, and quite frankly, a lot left to prove with how far indie developers have taken the 2D platforming genre in recent years. Even if Nintendo remade 2D Mario from scratch with a new graphical style and gameplay mechanics, it still probably wouldn't take them very long to make. I know this one's a little bit of a long shot for 2020, and I wouldn't put any money down on it. But given how well 2D Mario sells, I still think there's a slim chance for a new game in 2020. Number 8. A Wario Game With the precision of the gyro controls inside the Joy-Cons, I'm actually shocked we haven't seen a WarioWare game three years into the Switch's life. Maybe it's because Game & Wario sold terribly on the Wii U, but almost everything on that console was destined for death. And it certainly didn't help that the previous games in the series had like 85 times more content. So the long wait for a new WarioWare could either be attributed to Nintendo making sure the newest game's jam-packed, or because they just think people are over the series. If the Switch doesn't end up getting a new WarioWare game, though, it'd still be pretty cool to get a new platformer, at least. Because Wario Land Shake It on the Wii was underrated as hell. Either way, I think it's highly likely that Bizarro Mario is going to debut on the Switch in 2020. Number 9. Punch-Out. Most people don't really care about Punch-Out, but I think it's one of Nintendo's most underutilized IPs. I don't think a new game would light the world on fire in the same way Zelda, Mario, or Bubsy could. But not every game needs to be a 600-hour epic adventure with twists, turns, blackjack, and hookers. Sometimes a console needs fun bite-sized games to bridge the gap between bigger releases, and Punch-Out would be perfect for doing just that. But rather than just rehashing all the old characters for nostalgia purposes like the Wii version did, I'd love to see Nintendo come up with a brand new cast of over-the-top borderline offensive characters for Little Mac to overcome. And with Nintendo being big on utilizing gimmicks within controllers, the Joy-Cons would be one instance where it didn't feel forced as long as they didn't force it. Given that a new Punch-Out would be relatively easy to make, and with the last one selling over a million copies, I wouldn't rule this possibility out for a 2020 release. And it'd be all the more popular if they priced it at $40 or less. But then again, this is Nintendo we're talking about here, so we probably shouldn't hold our breaths on that one. Number 10. Metroid Prime 4. After this game's original development team shot the bed, everything had to be scrapped and restarted seemingly from scratch. Personally, I think we'd be lucky as hell to even see a trailer by the end of 2020. But still, though, we know for a fact that this game's in development, and even my inside source has no idea how far along it actually is. So we can't say for certain that the game's not gonna come out in 2020, even though I'd bet my left ass that it won't. Although, I can't be so sure about... Number 11. 2D Metroid. 3D Metroid's great and all, but that doesn't mean there's no room left in the world for Samus to have adventures in the second dimension. And if you ask me, I think that's exactly what the Switch needs, especially with the delay of Metroid Prime 4. Unfortunately, though, this probably isn't very likely since no one supported Samus Returns on the 3DS. But hopefully Nintendo realizes that that game's underwhelming performance was due to the 3DS being considered old news, and not necessarily because fans didn't want 2D Metroid. If we don't get a brand new 2D Metroid game, though, then hopefully they at least re-release Samus Returns on the Switch, where seemingly everything sells out the ass. But speaking of ports... Number 12. Lots of ports. With there still being a few Wii U titles yet to be re-released on the Switch, we all know a port or 13 are on the way. And even if you hate the fact that we've gotten so many Wii U games re-released on the Switch, I think we could all agree that at this point, Nintendo might as well just go ahead and bring the rest of them over while they're at it. Because even if you're one of the few people who actually bought a Wii U, there's still over 20 million people who've yet to play any of these games. And even if you did own a Wii U, chances are you didn't get around to playing every notable game anyway. So if that's the case, maybe 2020's as good a time as any. It's pretty lame that a lot of these games are ported over at full price, but Nintendo's a business, millions of people are buying them, and nobody's forcing you to pick them up. So even though I haven't been buying them, I can't really complain either. Regardless of how you feel about it though, it's pretty much a guarantee that Nintendo's gonna port some older games over to the Switch. Number 13. Pikmin 4. The Pikmin series isn't one of Nintendo's more lucrative franchises, but if you ask me, it's one of their absolute best in terms of quality. And thankfully, a fourth game is in fact in development for it, most likely because Miyamoto has a hard spot for it. Nobody outside of Nintendo knows how far along it is, but with Pikmin 3 being released in 2013, seven years is probably enough for a fourth installment to be a serious possibility for 2020. 
Number 14, Star Fox. The last Star Fox game fans were actually happy with was released all the way back in 1872, so needless to say, the series is long overdue for a good game. And if something as generic as Starlink can sell as well as it did just by throwing Star Fox characters into it, then I think it's pretty obvious that the demand for a new game is definitely there. For the longest time, there have been rumors that Retro Studios has been working on a Star Fox racing game, which may or may not be that mysterious game they alluded to all the way back in 2013. But whether it be a spin-off or a long-awaited properly made sequel, I think Star Fox would carry the Switch's momentum rather nicely, even though I've never personally been a big fan myself. And if that last comment offends you, then feel free to send hate mail to this address on the screen. Number 15. A new IP. With the Switch being a console where games sell out the ass no matter what, now's the perfect time for Nintendo to start creating new IPs. Because having more franchises for fans to be pissed at not having new games for is much better than running out of games to release. I don't really have a whole lot to say here, because obviously it'd be hard to predict what new IPs Nintendo could possibly be working on. But if I may throw a suggestion out there, then why not make a spiritual successor to the Mother series? Shigesato Atoy is pretty adamant about being finished with the Mother series, and since he's pretty old at this point, I don't think he's going to change his mind. And obviously, a Mother game without Shigesato Sato Atoy would be like a Metal Gear game without Hideo Kojima, so it's safe to say that if Nintendo tried to continue the Mother series without the brains of the operation, then it would just disappoint the fans. But still though, it's a shame for the engine and battle system to just sit there at Nintendo's headquarters, so why not just start something new? And if they're not going to make a new RPG, then why not bring back? Number 16. Golden Sun. This is another long shot for this list, but along with the Switch being the perfect place to create new IPs, it's also just as capable of resurrecting old ones as well. And even if the Golden Sun fanbase is relatively small right now, I think people would be all over a new game even if they never played any of the previous entries. Personally, I think it's a better idea to remake the first game so that new players wouldn't feel out of the loop with the fourth game. But either way, Nintendo shouldn't be too predictable by focusing on the same franchises in every console generation. Which of course brings us to... Number 17. Chibi Robo. Even though this is more likely than Golden Sun, it's still a bit of a long shot for 2020 seeing as how the franchise isn't that popular. I mean, to be honest, I haven't spent all that much time on the series myself even. But if hardcore fans are to be believed, then the first title on the GameCube was the best and most unique one. So if Nintendo wants their release schedule to be less predictable, and I think they should, then bringing a somewhat obscure franchise back to its roots would be a great way to freshen things up. Number 18. F-Zero. When asked about a new F-Zero game, Shigeru Hot Stuff Miyamoto said that he didn't want to make another game because there wasn't anything left to do with the series. Even though, well, you know, Mario Kart. But what Miyamoto should have said was that they just don't feel like making a new game, because there's always going to be new ideas, especially for something as interesting as F-Zero. Even if Captain Falcon has had a few personal demons to battle the past few years. If you ask me, I'd guess the chances of a new F-Zero game happening in 2020 are about 40% since fans do seem to actually want it. And with most of Nintendo's essential franchises already on the Switch, next year would be the perfect time to drop a new old game. But since the last entry was in 2004 on the Game Boy Advance, it's probably better you don't get your hopes up too much. Number 19, Mario Golf. These games are pretty much a staple on most of, but not all, of Nintendo's platforms. We always get a new game every few years, even though it's more often than not on a handheld device. But seeing as how the Switch is Nintendo's only platform left alive, Mario Golf's got nowhere else to go. It isn't one of Nintendo's more popular franchises, and the last game on the 3DS didn't sell particularly well. But again, first-party Switch games always seem to sell out the ass, and if Mario Tennis sold over 2 million copies, then a relatively simple game like Mario Golf could probably be a big deal as well. Number 20. Kid Icarus. After two decades of not seeing a new Kid Icarus game, Uprising came along on the 3DS and pleasantly surprised fans of the series, as well as creating new ones like myself. But as great as that game was, it still had a lot of room left for improvement, so it's a bit of a shame that we still haven't seen a sequel all these years later. Much like many other gaming franchises, I think this would be another case where the second game's the best. Because much like many other gaming franchises, I think this would be another case where the second one's the best. Because all they'd have to do to make a good game great is fix the awkward controls of the ground stages, which wouldn't be an issue with the Switch having impractical touch control that even Nintendo wouldn't try to force. With Masahiro Big Whip Sakurai being chained up in Nintendo's headquarters working on Smash DLC, though, it's unlikely that it even has time to return for an Uprising sequel to have it out in 2020. But with Uprising being so much different from the original two games anyway, an entirely new reboot might not be that far-fetched. Either way, a Kid Icarus franchise is still something Nintendo has up their sleeves, and a new game in 2020 is just as likely as any other year. Number 21. Pokemon Let's Go 2. 
If you asked me a month ago, I'd have guaranteed that another Let's Go game based around the second generation would be released in 2020. But if the uproar surrounding Sword and Shield's exclusion of the National decks, along with the less than stellar graphics, translates to poor sales, then releasing Let's Go games before core titles that fans are satisfied with would only lead to more riots. Despite the initial fan frustration, people were able to end up enjoying Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee for what they were, though. Pokemon games that were overly simplified but enjoyable enough on their own, just as long as they weren't threatening to replace their traditional series. But even though I'd bet money they were already working on Let's Go games for 2020, releasing them would be like hitting a hornet's nest unless fans ended up enjoying Sword and Shield, whether that be because the games ended up being fixed, or if it turns out they weren't as bad as people feared. Either way, given the success of the first games in the Let's Go series, sequels are almost certain to happen at some point in the future. Number 22. Mario Kart 9. Nintendo consoles have always had one Mario Kart title, and with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe still selling out the ass, I don't think we need a ninth game on the Switch at all. But traditions have been broken before, and since Nintendo loves money, they're probably wanting a huge game for the holidays of 2020. So unless sequels for Breath of the Wild or Mario Odyssey are ready in time, I wouldn't think Mario Kart 9 is highly unlikely for 2020, given how easy it is for them to make these games at this point. If we do get a new Mario Kart game, though, I just hope they heavily expand on using characters, and more importantly, courses outside of the Mario universe. Because there's only so many ways he could keep Bowser's Castle interesting for a ninth time. I don't think it's necessary to jam-pack the roster as much as Smash Bros, but even just adding a few new characters and courses from interesting universes like Metroid or Pokemon would probably break all kinds of records and bring ass loads of fun. If they're not gonna go the Nintendo Kart route, though, then they should at least make Double Dash 2. But I'll tell you two people who'd make excellent Double Dash drivers are today's patrons of the day, John Polish Impossible to Say and Aaron Cortez. Or if you'd rather show support by picking a shirt or mug up, then send pictures of videos of you rocking it to make a cameo like these badasses right here. What bullets in Nintendo's chamber do you think they'll fire off in 2020, though? Was there anything I missed besides Bayonetta 3, which isn't a Nintendo IP? Or do you think I'm 100% correct and deserve a medal? Either way, let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll try my goddamnedest to respond to everybody. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to see more videos like this. And if you want to help this channel grow, then simply liking and sharing goes a long way. My name's Cameron, and I'll see you next time. So I want to say thank you to your loyalty, thank you for your support.